we've been in the Nick Casario business for a few years now, uh, going back to 2021 when he took over. And it, it's hard to say, to compare what he did in those first two years, first couple of years, when, when you had all the dead cap, when you had limited draft equity, to what he's doing now. It, it's hard to find a tendency. M many believe that he would not spend money in free agency because that's not what he'd done the first well, two years. Well, that's what he didn't, yeah. I yeah. kind of rolled my eyes at that. Me now, too. They've spent the second most money in free agency thus far. Yeah. So we see Nick Casario, and we see him trading, and Trader Nick has become a nickname, and you know he's trading the extra second round pick for Stephon Diggs. He's trading up for Will Anderson. He's he's trading all over the place, and I gotta wonder: is this Nick Casario or is this just a phase? In other words, is Nick Casario making these moves, whether it be in 2021 when he traded up for Nico Collins? Is he doing that because it, perhaps he had limited draft picks and he wanted to trade up for those guys? And when he's making trades like Will Anderson and Stephon Diggs, is it because he had extra chips and extra draft equity to make a move? Do we have any idea what the identity is of Nick Casario? I, I think the identity is willing to adjust, willing to, to, to change his approach. Um, we, you know, if you go back and listen to our shows in, in 2020 and 2021, you know, we were often talking about. Like, don't read too much into this. That he's building it down. He's tearing it down to build it back up. Now he's building it back up, and he's doing it by adjusting what his what his makeup was, what his what his approach was uh, back then. That's that's strong. I mean that that's a really strong uh, attribute to have. You know, to be able to to say, all right, now we've been planning for this. Now let's execute that, and let's change the way we do things. I like. I think that's his strength, his ability to to have had this vision. I've said it here, you know, and actually, you know, plan for it, do the things to build for, toward that and get it done. So I don't know if he's really changed at all. I think this has been the same guy. That was just a different phase. I think he just evolves. And, and yeah. we said this, I know I, I've been saying this for a couple of years, and this was in 2021, 2022. And I said it when D'Amico was brought in. I wondered, you know, would the Texans be willing to roll the dice on guys that, you know, in, in other years, other regimes, other situations that they wouldn't be willing to roll the dice on? Uh, and this was one of the things that I liked about D'Amico Ryans. It seemed like a Stefan Diggs, who Mark Slareth called a turd uh, <laughs> the other day. Uh, I heard that on Payne and Pendergast. Um, I don't know that. Bill O'Brien would have been willing to take in Stephon Diggs. I don't even know if they he would have been willing to bring in Joe Mixon, although that's that's a long, long thing of the past. So I, I do think that we've at least seen that, and we've at least seen that type of evolving with Nick Casario. But this notion, and, and I keep hearing, well, he might trade up, and you know, he might do this. The Will Anderson and C.J. Stroud trade, which I think was a package deal and kind of a compromise between the draft room to get the two guys they liked most. I think it had as much to do, like there is a certain level of aggressiveness, mm -hmm. but I, I think it had as much to do with the fact that you had the extra draft picks in the Deshaun Watson trade. And the Stephon Diggs trade, that was a follow-up to trading with the Minnesota Vikings and getting an extra second-round pick to give up. Like if they had never made that Minnesota trade, I don't know that they trade one of their two seconds this year or their second next year for Stephon Diggs. Yeah. I, as a matter of fact, I would kind of bet against it. So, you know, he's developing a reputation – Next year, though, it's going to be back to normal draft equity. You're not going to have the multiple first-round picks, which mm -hmm. they traded the one this year. Mm -hmm. So I think we could see a change. And the other thing that I, that I think we need to be, we need to be aware of uh, when it comes to what Nick Casario does and what's, what's ahead of the Texans is the Bills, are kind, the Bills were kind of where the Texans are right now like three, four years ago. Like when Josh Allen, when you first thought Josh Allen might have something, you started being aggressive. You brought in Stephon Diggs. You brought in all these other guys to, to take advantage of that rookie window with Josh Allen. And then now, fast forward to here, you see the Buffalo Bills, they're having to get rid of guys. And they're, and they're getting rid of guys. They're unloading and they're learning that when your quarterback – establishes himself as, as really, really good, if not elite, it, it's more difficult uh, to keep these guys. And sometimes, you know, stuff stuff wears down like the Diggs thing. So the Texans are going to find themselves in that position. Like, as good as it is right now, Buffalo was enjoying this a few years ago, and this is just kind of their transition. I think we can go up 45, too, J-Lo. Yeah. Where 
the Cowboys, people are making fun of the Cowboys right now. Mm-hmm. A lot. And they're saying, man, they're not doing a damn thing in free agency. Look at them. They're, this mm-hmm. this is not what all in looks like. You can't call this all in. That's all, all they can do. But. Yeah. And and people like to use the Texans now as like a way to make fun of the Cowboys mm-hmm. because the Texans are winning the offseason. Yeah. But you know what the Cowboys have that the Texans are going to have two, three years from now? Yep. They have two elite guys that they're going to have to pay. They're going to have to pay C.D. Lamb. They're going to have to pay Micah Parsons. Mm-hmm. So they can't come out here and, and, and get Daniil Hunter for two years and that interfere with, uh, with, the, um, with the Micah Parsons situation. And that's yeah. where the Texans are going to be. And that's why this is such an important opportunity. And that's why you see an aggressive Nick Casario. But make no mistake about it. It's easy to sit here and look at Buffalo and say, look at this thing kind of unraveling. Look at Miami having to get rid of all these guys. But eventually you're going to get to a place, and hopefully they're proactive enough to – to at least minimize the damage, but you're going to get to a place where two years from now we're sitting there in free agency, and we might look at the Texans and say, okay, they have this much cap space, but oh, by the way, you're going to have to pay Will Anderson and C.J. Stroud eventually. Yeah. And oh, by the way, you also paid Derek Stingley. And oh, by the way, that Christian Harris guy has developed into a hell of a ball player, and you might might have have to to pay him him as well. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, and oh, by the way, you like what your offensive tackles are doing right now, but you might have to say goodbye to one of them and draft someone young. So. Now, I do think that while, while it's easy to look at Buffalo, just know that they were where the Texans were three years ago, and they functioned a completely different way. Brandon Bean functioned a completely different way three years ago yeah. than he is right now, and that's why this opportunity is so so important for the Texans. And, and, and that's what he's planning for, and that's why you know you learn from from not mistakes but other people's experiences, and that's why we're seeing these these three year contracts, two year contracts, uh, et, et cetera, because. Uh, you got to plan for that, and let's be honest. There's, there's, you know, we. This is stating the obvious, but the D'Amico Ra- Ryan's factor here, uh, with with these terms and with the contracts and with the players they're acquiring. I mean, that goes together with what Nick is doing, and that's why yeah. when you talk about and we talked about this yesterday, and, and we're creeping up on the draft. Uh, we're 16 days away, baby. Yes, sir. Uh, from the draft, really 17 for the Texans, if we're being honest. Um, <laughs> no, no, no first round pick, uh, but two seconds. We're we're looking at this, and that's why you know I don't think draft picks can be minimized because when it comes to having to pay all these guys, the the value of finding two starters on day two, a starter and a contributor on day three, it only increases because they're on the tail end of of the guys that you think you're perhaps going to have to pay. Right, and I think you, we're going to reach a point, maybe not next year, but soon, where all of a sudden this spending money spending money is going to be replaced with acquiring draft picks. And that's what that's that, that, that's what Nick Casario yeah. does well. And you're gonna have to say bye bye to some guys. You're gonna have to trade a guy for a second round draft pick, no doubt. You know, yeah, because that's how you're gonna get value. As opposed to right now, you have value with the money you're spending. And and look at Miami. It's there. really Miami's having to get rid of a lot of guys that their fans love, and Buffalo's having yeah. to get rid of a lot of guys that their fans love. They need draft picks. We're gonna get there. Yeah, uh, and and it's a better place to be than where we've been. But mm-hmm. I say all that to say to bring it back to where we started this segment. 16 days from the draft. Don't get to know Nick Casario too much and establish some sort of identity because the more success you have, the more stuff changes. Landry Locker, John Lopez, Figgy Fig with you here on Houston Sports Leader Sports Radio 6.